In this session, we'll talk about highlighting. Uh, highlighting is something that provides visual feedback about what was selected. So it is separate from selection. Uh, one could select on items in the scene graph and just programmatically have the list of selected items and then iterate through them and take action without ever seeing any visual feedback. But highlighting would typically be used to give visual feedback about what was selected and so the user interactively could have some, some visual way of, of knowing what action to take. Uh, so Visualize does provide highlighting uh, support capabilities out of box. To start with, highlighting can be provided at different levels. And so um, that could be based on segment level, uh, could be geometry level, could be sub-geometry level. And it's managed using the highlight control. So that actually will provide highlighting based on a highlight options kit, which can let us specify our specific highlight options. For example, how should our item appear based on whether it should have different colors to denote highlighting or different sub-pieces of geometry, faces, edges, vertices, uh, should be uh, displayed. And um, additionally, we uh, can highlight based on um, off of so a list of selection results. So this could be tied to uh, a, some selection information that had been gathered beforehand. Uh, we could have just done a search, and so you can, if you had search results already around from before, beforehand, you could highlight off search results, or you could directly highlight off of a specific key or key path. Again, that could be a key to a segment, a piece of geometry, um, or a full key path up the tree to avoid any ambiguity uh, when highlighting an object that might have been referenced or included at multiple times. So for highlighting, it's important for performance reasons, which we'll get a little bit into later, to use the highlight control when doing highlighting. So you can imagine to represent highlighting, you could just have the user pick on something and then directly go to that object's, uh, con uh, let's say, color, uh, material control, and directly change that object's color. The issue with that is that's going to be an edit to the actual database. And when we do edits to the actual database entities, that can have performance impl implications later on for other performance uh, optimizations. So the way highlighting is going to work is it's actually going to internally create a temporary reference to that object and draw a copy of it on top. Um, and there's, whether it's on top or overlaid, uh, there's more control over that as well which we'll get into in the next slide. But if we look at snippet 64A, uh, we can see how we could simply set up, uh, set up a simple uh, chunk of highlight code. So here we have a uh, name style called orange style, and we're in our, port our, our portfolio that we have already previously set up and obtained here. We're gonna define our name style and it's going to have a, a special face color. So this is going to be um, the style that we're going to use for highlighting. So then we'll set up in our highlight options kit, we'll set a, up a, the style that we've previously defined. We'll push that portfolio so that it's active on our window. And then we'll actually highlight this item referenced by this key path with this highlight options kit. So right there, we've customized the way we're going to do highlighting, and we're highlighting a specific option, a, a specific um, entity or potentially a segment pointed to by this key path. Similar to some of the other out-of-box operators, Visualize does provide two variants of the highlight operator. One just called highlight operator, which is uh, based on single pick, so it will not only pick something and select something, but it will also immediately highlight it. So you could think of as two in one. And the highlight operator, if we look at the source code, I believe it is derived from the select operator, which has its source code provided as well. As you can imagine, the highlight area operator will highlight based on dragging an area select box and highlight anything that falls 
with inside or intersects with that select box. Some sample code here showing how to create a new uh, highlight operator and um, make it active and so on and so forth. As we showed, when you create a new, uh, when you create a custom highlight operator, you could have it you have use a highlight options kit that's based on a custom name style, and you can also specify what's called an overlay mode. So that can give you some control over the visual appearance of something that's being highlighted. So it's good to segue here into overlays. Overlays in Hoops Visualize refer to having items in the scene drawn that are, they could still be 3D objects, but they could be drawn, um, forced to be on top of the entire scene. Um, and they could also be drawn within their current 3D location, but with a different highlight, with a different color. But when we draw them in a special overlay mode, it allows us to achieve some performance benefits. So anytime something is drawn using the overlay drawing attribute, if nothing has changed from the previous, between the previous update and the next update, Hoops Visualize will only undraw and redraw items that reside in segments that have the overlay drawing attribute. So let's take a simple example of this. I have a very, very complex scene, and I want to just draw a select box. So I would insert the polyline for that select box in a segment that has the overlay drawing attribute. And on every update, as I draw the select box, I'm going to flush my previous select box's polyline and insert a new one. So what Hoops Visualize will do is from update to update to update, as I'm constantly erasing and drawing the new select box, or sometimes called, as, called a rubber band box, uh, Visualize will not redraw the existing scene at all. It is able to just flush the previous polyline, select box polyline, and then draw the new one because it was drawing those in overlay planes in this case. It might have done overlay planes or uh, using a, a, con a technique called 3D spriting, but that's really not for you to have to worry about. That's done underneath the hood in our 3D OpenGL or Direct3D drivers. So no different than if you are on a Windows desktop and you're going to select some stuff on the desktop and you're drawing a polyline select box. It might be drawn in an overlay planes or using exclusive OR drawing. It's a very quick way to undraw and redraw items without redrawing the entire scene. So this should only be used in these typical kinds of use cases, drawing select or rubber band boxes for you know, camera select boxes or select, uh, selection, uh, uh, camera zoom boxes or selection boxes. Maybe you want to highlight and unhighlight parts of the model like we covered previously. So if you highlight something and then unhighlight it, and with those highlight options kit, you can specify the overlay setting. And there's a couple overlay modes which we'll get to. We can highlight the item and unhighlight it without redrawing the rest of the scene. So highlighting and unhighlighting will be basically instantaneous. Okay. We do have to undraw and redraw the highlighted items, but that's usually very, very fast. And another example might be moving items around. Let's say I want to pick something and move it around. Okay, well, I'm not really ready to know where I'm going to place it yet, so I select it, I create a reference copy of it, put the reference copy of it in a segment that has the overlay drawing attribute, and then I make my tra transforms to the item as I move my mouse around. I could drag and drop this item and place it in the new location. So while I'm moving that item around visually on the screen and seeing it move, Maybe I have a, a copy of it in the previous location. I, I've created a temporary copy. I do not have to redraw the entire scene as that item is being moved around. There are three overlay modes. One is called uh, normal overlay. So this is uh, going to cause any of the geometry to always be drawn completely on top. Okay, this would be not only like the case shown here for 3D geometry, but certainly if we're going to draw any type of um, selection feedback geometry, like a select box or a, a, you know, a transparent select box, for example, would be drawn with normal overlay. So it's always in the front. 
We can overlay with z values, which is a little bit misleading of a name, quite honestly, because we're not overlaying the tread of the snowmobile. It's, we're actually just drawing it in place. So it is actually technically being overlaid. It's just the highlighted items being overlaid on top of the original item, so it still has the original z location. Uh, again, we can do this. We can draw it and then undraw it very quickly because it ac actually is being drawn uh, with some 3D spriting techniques so we don't have to redraw the rest of the scene. And then finally, there's a concept, uh, an overlay mode of in place. This is useful if you have a highlight style to overlay geometry and that style is uh, including transparency. So in this case, the overlay geometry is not drawn. At, rather, the highlight itself is drawn in place of that. So the previous two examples, the original geometry is still there, but we're just drawing either completely on top of it or slightly brought to the front um, 3D overlay uh, like the snowmobile track here. We actually are drawing a copy of this snowmobile track on top of the existing one. It's just slightly offset. But here we do not draw this original BNC uh, metal piping piece, but in place of it, we're going to draw the transparent item. Again, this has good performance benefits, so this is why we want to use the highlight options kit and use the overlay options whenever we're going to, to, uh, to highlight items. A good uh, exercise to go through this material would be to work through tutorial for the first three sections which gives us some good hands-on of both selection and highlighting.